Hi guys, it's me Karen and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a little video that was requested on Distress Ink. I've got two pieces of paper here in front of me. One is a 20 weight uh, piece of paper that comes that you do your printing on in your printer. So it's a real thin piece. And then this one on the other side is a thick um, cardstock, 110 weight. Now you're wondering why they're there. <laughs> I'm going to show you how I use my Distress Inks with um, this tool here. This is a um, mini blending tool from Ranger, Tim Holtz line. They come with these little sponge applicators on that you can take off change to another one, put back on, use however you want. If you'll notice, one thing on mine is the is a line here. Light blue, dark blue. When I always ink my inking tools up for when I'm drawing in my coloring books, I usually just use one half. So I will ink up the one half and then I can make my round circles, draw in the lines of the coloring book. When I'm doing backgrounds, I will also use kind of the half of the little stamping or the little whatever you want to call it, spongy thing. Because you don't need a whole ton of ink to just to do a background in a book, depending on the paper also in your book. That's why I have two different sheets out. What I will do, I'm going to move these. Uh, these are the three basic colors I use in my um, Magical Dawn book. So there's a light pink, a dark purple, and a mediumish blue. So I thought I could give you a look at all three of those colors. We're going to start off with the blue since I have it here. Yeah, throw it across the desk too. Okay, ink pad is a felt ink pad and there is ink that is sitting on the top along with the felt pad that's below it. Now this particular ink pad is probably three years old and has never had to be refilled but they do sell refillers. They come in like a little droplet tube and you drop some ink down onto the pad. Let it sit for a while before you use it or you're going to be using way too much ink. Normally when I do my inking, I will put it down and angle it on here and rub it. So you have a nice little coating there. When I go into a book, sometimes I will dab it off on another piece of paper just because if you put this down and you put pressure on it, you're going to end up with a little circle. You can just keep rubbing that around with this. This is really thin paper, so I have to hold it down. Rubbing it and getting less of a perfectly round circle, but you're still going to end up with a darker spot in the center, which if you keep at adding a little more ink into it, you can just get it a nice dark blob of ink depending on your look you're going for. Now, usually I will take some on here and it'll have like a line. We'll just draw a line here. We'll say um, there's a flower or something, so just make a blob. And it's been colored in darker in these areas. So we'll just kind of make that a little darker. This is kind of a really rough thing. But because I only ink it halfway, I put it on the dark area on the coloring. So you get the ink here. In a light touch, you just kind of pull it out from that area. And then you can rub it a little bit. Again, this paper is extremely thin and it would be like, um, Probably your create space paper. But one of the things that you need to know about inking is you can put a really light layer on there and get it really soft. 
and then just add a little more add a little more and add a little more and you will get that dark without having to start off dark and usually that is what I do is I will go in lightly and then add a little more color into that and get it to feather out a little bit don't go back into your inking you don't need to there's a lot of ink on this pad and just continue to go around until you get the desired look and that is the blue you do have to keep in mind different papers have different abilities I'm gonna say <laughs> This is an extremely smooth. This has got a little more tooth. So when you put this down on a very light surface here, you're going to get probably a little more chunking on it. You have to keep good control over your little tool. That's why I hold it down here. But you'll see we have these little circular things here. It's because the paper itself is grabbing onto the sponge. Okay, really has nothing to do with your ability to get the ink to go anywhere. It's the paper itself. So you kind of have to test it out in the back of the book and you can see how it moves. To me, it doesn't matter if I get some of those little chunky marks in my inking because I take water and spritz it on any dark areas that I don't want and I lift it up with a washcloth. So say there's a, we'll just do it, a dark circle right there. <laughs> and I don't like it. We'll take a little bit of the water and I'll spritz the paper like that, give it a few seconds, and then I'll lift the ink up. And that takes your eye away from that little circle area that you just put down a little too dark. I love this effect one because it looks cool and two because it can cover up any of the little boo-boos or mistakes that you have put down on the paper and it goes great with the little white splatters that I like to use. It kind of softens up your background also with the Distress Ink, if you're using, say, like a stencil type thing, like this little cloud, I'm going to have to use it on this side of the paper because that side's still wet. Still, I'll just ink that one side. It looks like I'm using it all, but I'm just rubbing it at an angle like that. You want to start on this object, not out here. So get your ink going here and then pull it out. And you don't need to put too much on when you're doing a stencil because the magic happens when the white page is there. So you just rub it around. Then you get a cloud effect. But most of all that extra ink is going on to this package. Now there is another thing you can use if you have... I don't know if I have one sitting here on my desk. Um, that's not one. Just get one of these out. This is like the um, cutting boards that I get at the Dollar Tree store. This has got a rough side and a shiny side. You can tell by the reflection of the light. And this one doesn't have one. Use this side and say I don't want to put any color on the inside of this cloud but I want some color outside. So you can use this to block off something on your page, put it on this side of the plastic, smoosh it around here and then bring some color out. And that'll give you a nice soft line that goes across if you wanted to make a hill and you have ink left on this plastic pad so you can just grab it and pull it up. It 
and then you have more ink. I do that a lot with sticky notes when I'm doing my coloring in coloring books and I will just lay them down across the line, put them down, say I have a corner here I want to make sure I don't get any of the coloring book page and I'll just go on top of these and ink it the same way. And then when you remove these things, you're going to get the same effect. It's a little darker up here because, again, you're using the um, ink off of the plastic. Here it's sinking into the paper. So that is another way of using it. Another way of doing this kind of thing is if you want to do it on the corner of the paper. Again, we'll add a little ink. Go on the plastic here and then just bring it into the edge. This is a really good practice because you want your corner not to have a circle on it. So this will give you the amount of ink you want to use on your page. Also if you have the ink on one side and you don't have it on the other and you're using the ink down here, you can buffer it with the other one and it will never get very dark. But you can darken the corner up as much as you want. You can layer Distress Ink on top of Distress Ink on top of Distress Ink too. So, I mean, you can put tons of layers down if you want. Always remember, it's easier to add more color than it is to take it away. <laughs> because even if you took it away with water, you're not taking away all of it. It does have some erasability, but not much. So if you use one of these, um, erasers. See, it's not going to take up a whole bunch, but will take up enough to make, say, a tiny little circle. If you are using it on a wet surface that you just did, you can add another little spot in here, here and there. You can do that part of it. I'm going to switch colors and get a different uh, ink pad out here. And when I say you can add ink on top of ink, you can add ink colors and blend them too. So we're going to get the purple one. I'm going to ink up the purple. And say I want to put a little purple here next to this. Of course, I'm working on the plastic first, and then I'm going to bring in some of that purple. Go right over the blue that's existing there. And then just softly bring it in. And yeah, see, I'm getting those little circles, but I can either work them out by just gently rubbing over them and darkening it up. And there we go. Then you can work back and forth between the uh, blue one And the purple one. You'd put this on a tool, but you see what I mean. And if you splatter that with water, you'll get a cool effect with that too because you are separating the two colors. So you'll have some blue and then some purple. I just love that effect. Sorry. <laughs> You can also get these uh, to merge together if you spray them with water and tilt the paper and the color will go down the page. I don't know if I have enough ink on here to do that, but we'll get that wet and see if we can't get the color to blend, bleed down. Okay, look at the blue and the purple. And you can get it to smear in that way too. I'll get some lines here so it can go that way. And dry that up and you'll have a nice little trail of that coming down. 
once this is dry you can layer another color on there if you want if you like that effect just bring in a little purple and you can color up some of that also okay still a little wet there these will all dry a different color than when you're putting them down so if you like a light effect just put one layer down let it dry look at it if you want it darker add more ink you can put it down pretty dark and it'll add, end up a little lighter not much though so you gotta kind of have to test that out too what I kind of suggest if you're going to get into using the distress ink as backgrounds is just to play with it on different um, let's see we have a different tool here we'll try this one out for you sometimes it's um, easier for you to use different tools so I'm going to put there's glitter on here because I <laughs> I was putting um, distress ink on a background that I had already put stickles on so that's stickles glitter so we will ink up this one it's going to have pink on here and then you can gently put it down with one of these I find this uh, a nice technique if you're going to put a very soft layer down which looks nice um, you have to have a few of these if you want to mix colors like put a purple on top of that or you can just go in here and use the other tool here one of the things I think you should remember is um, if you're going to put this ink down on something that's damp or wet you're going to get a whole different look than if you're putting it on dry paper so it smears funky so make sure your paper is dry but you can also get this wet and give it a nice effect too and you can put this on because this is so soft you can put this gently on any kind of paper without getting a um, circular thing that this ink pad will do for you you're not going to get that circle so if you're having trouble in your books and you want to get a softer look in the background I'll leave a link down for these I will leave a link down for these and I can also leave a link down for um, these things this is a detail um, tool mini blending tool detail blending tool so you have a teeny little sponge thing and you can get into tiny corners and smear your ink around that way uh, q-tips work the same as those so I mean you can use whatever you want to get that kind of effect so what I suggest to anybody who's just getting started in this grab yourself some blank paper the paper that you think fits closest to your coloring books this one would be more like a um, mythomorphia kirby book this one is more like you know your thin paper books i don't have very many that are this thin also go into the back of your coloring book we all have uh, backs of coloring books I know that kind of sounded silly but go into the back of the page there's going to be something back here on this one and if you wanted to test it out take your little tool and lay it down and see what you think if this tool will be good enough for you to put down some color on here This might take you a while because this tool is extremely soft and you can't you can't put enough pressure on this to get it to make any um, harsh lines for you. OK, 
okay but if you used this one I'm going to change colors here because I like that a pink one we'll just go with pink take that one off Boom. okay this one I get more um, control over. I'm very, very lightly putting this down, but I can get it deeper in some spots and then bring it out and make it softer in others. So you put a little color down and then you just softly bring it over. Tiny little circular motions or scrappy motions if you like, but very soft. We'll get some in here too. And then just bring it up into nothing. Bring it down into nothing. So when you're doing it, just softly bring it down and then just almost nothing. Just continue to bring it down into very, very soft. And that gives you that nice little variegation. And like I said, when we do this, I always like to put a little spray on there and lift it up and you get that A nice little it's not drying up because my rag is wet that nice look to it get a little more here there we go so if you had any lines that fixes it up for you and also if you wanted to take a little um, white paint which is just this stuff here water it down and you can tap it in there and you get little white dots. Uh, I don't even know if I have any in this book. Got some in this one. You've seen it if you watch my channel. I've got videos of putting little white dots on everything. So we'll find a page in here and I will show you. Like on here you have the white splatters and you can just put that on top of it too. That'll also hide anything if you don't like to look at it. Just tap on some of those. I hope that answered the questions or some of the questions that were asked about this. Like I said, you can get um, softer tools, these kind of tools. You can get the uh, little sticky guys. I'll leave um, links down for all of these. Uh, the spray bottle is also from Ranger, but it's just one that um, does little more splattering effect than a regular spray bottle because of the nozzle. I'll leave a link down below for that also. That's about all I know about the uh, Distress inks. Um, they come in two sizes. This regular size and then these teeny cubes. You can use these cubes just as well as you can use those. They will last you a long time as long as they are uh, full of ink. Fun thing is you can always stick your little pad without all the hair on it <laughs> in the bottom of the cubes. And then you always have the right one to stick on your little thingy bopper. So you have those. We have um, ink oxides also. They're a little harder to use in your, in your books. Now these are the same colors. They are both Dusty Concord. Let's get these out of the way. You'll look at this one and then look at this one. You'll notice that right away there's a difference between the two. One is going to be a darker ink that is transparent. This one is going to be an ink that is opaque. Let's see. I don't think I have. Oh, I do. Okay. I have both of these. So 
when you ink this one up, you can see the ink moving there on the top. And you'll get this. Let me flip these. Okay, so what we're going to do is flip the paper and I'm going to show you what the oxide does. So we'll make sure we have enough on there. This is the oxide. You'll notice that that goes down opaque and there's a lot of ink on this because it kind of like rides on the top of the paper. Then we will show you the exact same color in the regular ink. And you notice A1, it's darker. But even when you put it down, you can get to see the paper through that. And it will lighten on the outside of this. I've got it on a piece of paper. So we're getting that line. Okay. Now there is an effect when you add water to these too. Well, you've seen the effect on the first one. So you put some water down and you're going to get that lift. Okay. We're going to put some water down on this one. You're going to get a lift, but you're going to notice something that happens here. So here we go into either the white, and because I have a different color on the background, it's probably going to bleed up some of that, but it's more white. This one, when it gets wet, turns a gray, kind of a soft gray, weathered kind of look. That's where your oxide comes in. This also will take a while to dry. It's still wet to the touch, and this is already dry. And smeary. <laughs> but this ink is kind of like a chalk ink. How a chalk ink sits up on top. It is still a water soluble ink and you'll get this really cool effect. The only thing is when you're going over a color book with lines. We'll go back to this page. It should be dry. Just move these things out of the way. Okay. Okay, so we're going to put the uh, oxide guy back on here because you know what distress ink does. And we'll put some oxide up here on the top. Now, you see how it goes down? It will cover over, get it right up here. The lines a little bit more than here. It kind of coats them thicker. When you add water to it on this book, I find one of these that's dry. I have rags all over my desk. Okay, you're gonna get a similar effect, except for there's gonna be a different color that comes up. Now sometimes this is good, sometimes it's not something you want, but also just for the fact that it covers up the lines a lot more than this does is one of the reasons I don't like using it in this book or any of the books. I will if I've covered the uh, coloring in here with a wax base pencil and then put the distress ink on top of it. You're still you're not going to mess up your ink or your pencil work. This one will. It will coat right over your pencils. And then you have to wipe it off and then you have to do anything else you want to do to it. Either one of these grab a um what do we got a green here? wax base pencil. We've got a Prisma. You can color over this. I'm just going to add some green in there. And 
and it doesn't affect the green color. But when we go up here, and I have to wait for it to dry, your coloring will change with the purple if you're coloring over it. In the mouse guard book, I do a lot of inking and then I'll use the pencil over the ink. So there's a difference between that color green and this color green. You're also picking up some of that um, ink color on your pencil because this takes like 48 hours to completely cure. <laughs> that to me it does. <laughs> and this one only takes a matter of minutes. Okay, I put the wrong lid on here. But that's the difference between the two colors too. You've got Dusty Concord, Dusty Concord. Distress Ink, Oxide. Sometimes it's kind of fun to have different colors, but don't expect it if you're buying this color in the Distress Ink to be the same as the Oxide color. Even, I don't think any of them are. Maybe black might be, but... So keep that in mind if you're buying them. I'd buy the Distress Ink, but you might like this effect. So that's what they're playing around is fun. Take a day, get out your inks, get out your tools, and just go for t go for it on all of your, um, you know, blank papers. I have a lot of these sitting around on my, <laughs> my, in my drawers and such that I go through and I will draw a picture on and see how the ink will work on it. Make sure the color is the right combination if I want to have it with the certain colors. Like that particular green doesn't go terribly good with those two colors, but... A darker one would have worked better. There we go. <laughs> Any other questions you have on these kind of inks that you think I can answer, go ahead and put it down in the description box uh, or down in the comments section and I will try to answer them. But this is how I use them and I hope I answered the questions that you had the most of. Like I said, I will leave a link down below for all the tools that I have out here. So the, um, the this is a makeup tool, and this one is the detail tool, and this is just the mini blender. It comes in round and in square. The square is kind of big and it's kind of obnoxious, so I like the round one better myself. I'll leave all these links down below. I hope. You guys have a wonderful day. Take care, everyone. <laughs> Bye now.